Trading futures and options on futures involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all traders and investors. Oftentimes in futures trading, you have a high combination of leverage and volatility. And although this could be an equation for opportunity, it's also an equation for risk. So be careful, only fund your futures trading account with risk capital. My personal definition of risk capital is money I could afford to lose doesn't change my lifestyle or overly stress me out. As human beings, we make bad decisions when we're under stress, so be in a good spot. Remember, micro contracts could be friends. Take it easy on the day trade margins. You get plenty of leverage without maxing out on those day trade margins on a regular basis. We'll be taking a look at a real-time simulated live ninja trader trading platform today, and none of this should be construed as trade or investment advice. Past performance not indicative of future results. Good morning, everybody. Maybe good afternoon is in order. Not sure, depending on where you're at. My name is Jim Cagnina with Ninja Trader. It is Monday, October 23rd, 2023. And welcome to Ninja Trader Platforms Unleashed. Appreciate everybody being here today. And what this series is about is about the various ways you could trade uh, with the Ninja Trader applications. And there's three of them. There's the PC-based download one where we spend an awful lot of time on, right? You download it on your PC, award-winning PC uh, uh, download trading platform. Um, there's the web-based uh, trading platform, which we're going to talk about today. And then there is the mobile app, which is the third way to trade. So we're going to focus a little bit today on the uh, web-based application. And it's pretty handy, especially, you know, a lot of some people have Macintoshes as an example. Some people have big, uh, um, no, what do they call them? Notepads, iPads. So those are still a thing, right? Um, and then um, just be, to be able to access a web-based platform is certainly handy without having to download something onto a different PC that's not your, you know, regular workstation. So there's a lot of benefits from the web-based and it's pretty, the web-based platform is pretty, it's pretty good. It's pretty, it's pretty intense. Um, data streams in there, data flows quickly uh, into the platform. Trades are executed quickly in and out of the uh, platform. So we're gonna spend a little bit of time here. I'm gonna show you my setup and I'm gonna talk about how to, how to create your own setup, which could be unique to you. It doesn't have to be my setup, but let's go ahead and take a peek. So um, let me move uh, one of my windows out of the way here. All right, so here's my setup right here. And, and this, is, this, is a, a, this, this software, this this web-based uh, platform, and you can see it's web-based, right? I'm in a browser, web.ninjatrader.com. Um, it's, it's modular, so you can add or remove uh, and resize modules however you'd like. And just to kind of give you an outline of what I have on my, on my setup, I have a trading ladder on the left, right? I have a depth of market trading ladder, matrix, whatever you want to call it, dome, trading dome, right here on the left, right? I have E-mini S&P selected right now. And I, it's, it's, it's got a series of tabs, right? So I could tab to a different market. If I'd like to tab to a different market, it's easy to do. Um, and I'll show you how to uh, add tabs and remove tabs and all that stuff. So this is, mo this, is, this is a module, right? I could have as many trading ladders up side by side as I want. Um, or you could just have one with the tab system, however you want to handle it. Um, go next over to the right, I have a chart. I have an E-mini S&P chart at the top here. It's a 10-minute chart. And right underneath it, I have a daily chart. Now, we could expand the chart. We could do technical analysis on the chart. We, you know, we, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's very handy. It's very intuitive, very user-friendly. But there's my second. This is my second module. On the right-hand side, I have a quote board. Right. This is a quote board. Right. It shows last price change. And, you know, all these columns are customizable. I could add columns. I could delete columns. I could put whatever kind of information up there that's important to me. And again, series of tabs. I have stock index futures. I have currencies. I have energies. I have metals. I have grains, meats, softs and even stocks on the far right hand side. That's a that's that's a, that's a different module underneath it. Is the is my orders? These are my open orders or filled orders, whatever I want to track here in my in my next one. And the one underneath that, the module underneath that is positions. This shows me my open positions. You can see I have an open position right here in the in the Nasdaq. I'm green. I'm long uh, one contract uh, at this price. And here is my open unrealized uh, gross PL on that uh, position. 
at the bottom here, I have a couple more charts, a couple more charts down here at the bottom. So it's really easy to add these and to go ahead and customize them to however you want them to be customized. Um, over the next couple of weeks, we're going to talk in detail about how to how to customize the charting and some of the other features of the platform. Um, and, and But today we're going to do an overview on how to kind of create this kind of workspace uh, for you if you're so interested. Now, at the very top, um, are some uh, menu items too. And let me go through those really quickly. We have a, we want to click on that plus sign is add modules. You want to add something, you could click on that. Um, this uh, is to trade. This is the up and down arrows, the universal up and down arrows to, to activate trading. We have a uh, alerts uh, a menu uh, button up here and then a search button. And this is the find symbols and stuff like that. And then moving over to the right hand side. Now I'm in, a, I'm in sim mode right now. I got a real time simulated live uh, account. And because of that, I have this open an account button here reminding me that it's easy to do. Just click on this button here and you could open up an account online to trade real money instead of simulated live money. Um, my account information here in the drop down, I, I only have one account, so there's nothing really to drop down to, but I could log out if I want. Um, but that's my demo account number. My equity there is moving around mark to market in real time. And... Um, my open p &L is moving around as well. Again, drop down menu there. Gives me a whole bunch of other stats, including daily loss limit, uh, weekly loss limit, you know, all of that kind of stuff is right there. And kind of a panic button. Exit, exit all positions and cancel all. Uh, on the right-hand side, it's got a margin, uh, a margin area. It shows me how much my day trade margin I'm using, how much my initial margin I'm using based on the $45,000 you saw in my account. This is, uh, this is, um, uh, reminds me of where I'm at uh, while I'm trading. And it moves around in real time. You can click on it too, and you can get some more account level information. We'll talk about this in a little bit more detail uh, in a minute, but you could have, you could definitely produce orders. I'm sorry, uh, reports for performance, orders, position history, cash history, order details. Let's just go to orders while we're here. While we're here, let's go ahead and do it. And let's just say today is my date and I want to hit the go button. It'll give me all of my orders, right? These are all the orders that I've, I've uh, placed today on the platform in this particular account. Um, and it's got, you know, uh, account level details on each of those particular components. Um, say, same with position history, cash history, order, order details and all of that stuff. And you query, you just say, hey, these are the dates I'm interested in. And then you hit the go button. Um, on the left-hand side also, it's giving me my net lick. It's giving me my total margins used to get, uh, it's giving me my initial margin, uh, my margin available, all of that imp important information, uh, whether I'm day trading or holding positions overnight. Let's keep moving though. Um, so that's the, on the right hand side, you'll see this application setting button here. I'm going to click on the application setting button. It's going to open up a web page. Remember, this is web based, right? This is in the cloud, web based stuff. Um, and I could change my appearance. I, I like dark better, especially on a cell phone. It's way easier for me to read. If you get anything out of this, um, if you, when you get to when you get to the mobile th mobile side of things, or even if you're looking at this on your on your on your mobile device, the web based on your mobile device, dark is better it, uh, for my eyes, for old people's eyes. In any event, <laughs> I have auto roll contract enabled. Right, you can disable it if you don't want to automatically roll your contracts. Uh, forward when, it's, when the time comes. Um, notifications, all sorts of notifications are available to you, including sending an account summary by email, and then you have order uh, notifications, new, news uh, notifications, audio and push. Um, you can get stuff, sh shout out to your cell phone, which could be the greater annoying, depending on your point of view. I like it. I love it. Hotkeys are disabled for now. I can configure hotkeys and then confirmations. Also, you could turn on or off at the bottom. So that's kind of this area here. And then security privacy settings, you can go into privacy mode and uh, enhance the privacy of your account. That's the upper right. The next button on the right, again, I'm going around the frame, right? I started on the upper left, I went all the way to the upper right, now I'm going down. There's a, there's a built-in um, news uh, uh, feature there, you click on that, and it gives you some stories, right? It gives you some really good information, real-time stories from RTT News, invest, investing.com, also populates that in here. There's some other sources as well. And it gives you some high, some stories you could click on and read about that might affect uh, your trading. Um, we have a notification center here. If you have notifications, they'll show up there. Uh, reports, again, click on the reports. We already been to this page once. 
Um, I just wanted to show it. It's the second way to access this particular page as well to get information on you know, your performance and everything all the way down the line. Uh, further down here, we have community indicators. Let's click on the community indicators. And that's giving us um, a whole bunch of, I, I don't I guess I'd call them plugins, right? You, you know, add-ons or, um, or whatever the right term is. And you could install any of these um, and then add them to your technical analysis. And there's a lot of them. I'm scrolling down, I'm scrolling down. This is a very active community with a lot of support and a lot of great stuff here. You know, the technology behind the scenes here is pretty good, um, needless to say. And then there's that little question mark button, that help button. Click on that, it'll open up a, a help page with different icons on it. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and uh, just dive right into it. Let me get out of this. Oh, I'm gonna skip the tutorial. All right, skip the tutorial. Making me skip the tutorial. All right, so we're back here. Now, how, what, do I, what do I mean by the, you could move these things around? All right, so it's modular, right? So I could grab, let's say I want the orders to be at the, uh, the positions to be above the orders. I could grab it with my mouse and just move it up and position it to where I want it to be. So I just changed that position. And you can see it's kind of smart, right? So as an example, let's go ahead and move the trade, the dome over a little bit. So when I grab it, with my mouse, left click, I move it over, and it gives me suggested areas where maybe I could let go and it would populate the dome at different, at different places uh, on, my, on my workspace. So it gives me the ability to go ahead and do that. And so wherever, wherever you feel, and you could make this however you want to make it, right? I can move this all the way to the right as an example. So I let go of my mouse when I finally have it positioned the way I want it to be, and then it, and, it, and it puts it in that particular uh, position. It puts it in that position. Um, and that's true for any of these windows. Any of these windows are true. If I want to move the trading ladder over, I'm just going to grab the active tab. I'm going to move it over. It's going to highlight it. And then it'll go, it'll go ahead and move it over, right? It'll move it over. And then I could position things, other things, different places. As an example, I could move this chart maybe above this chart if I want the daily on top, or I could even move it into a tab. Okay, let's do that. I'm gonna move it into a tab instead of making it its own position on the desktop. And there it is, it's in the tab. So now these two tabs are 10 minutes, and then I have a 60 minute tab uh, right there. So this is the good thing about this is, and again, I've, I've taken this tab outside, off of this tab, if I wanted to move this tab back to the original tab position on the dome, I'm gonna just drag it again and let go of it and everything adjusts, right? Everything adjusts. So after a while, you could kind of see like how, how exactly you want uh, your space to look. Now I, I'm using one monitor. I have multiple monitors, right? But I'm using one monitor right now for presentation purposes. And you know, if you experiment with the look and feel and your trading style and all of that stuff, um, and then you'll be good to go. So again, you just grab in the top, you're moving things over to wherever you want to position them. Let's move this charts over to the right, I'm gonna grab that other tab, I'm gonna add it to the tab on the right. That's gonna put the charts on this side, the trading ladder in the middle. So depending on how you like it, that's the best way to go. Now I liked it originally with everything on the left, but we'll leave it here for now, um, just so we could take, kind of take a peek at, at, at what we're looking at here. Let's start with the chart. All right, so I have a December, let's go to a 10 minute chart. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and expand it. And there's these little uh, arrows that are pointing to the upper right, there's two of them, and you hover your mouse over, it's like full size, I'll click on that, and it's gonna open it up into a, you know, it'll take the whole screen, right? And you could toggle it back smaller again, right? The same way the arrows are pointing the other direction right now, it says minimize. So you could go ahead and minimize the windows also. Uh, that per uh, that particular way, and then you have some you have settings here also for the charts. So let's take a peek. There's the uh, there's the uh, view settings button here. That looks like a little cog, a wheel. I'm going to open it up, and you could uh, make some. You you know I'm in trade mode right now. Um, I could take. I have contract details up. Um, I could add a countdown. I could add a uh, change my stop type right from that particular menu menu uh, right there. Now. Uh, on the inside left, upper left of the chart itself, these are actual buttons to do things to the charts themselves. So I have a 10 minute time frame here. Let's say I wanted to change it to a 15 minute. I'm gonna hit the drop down menu. I'll just click on 15, it'll change it. It's really easy. Same with candlesticks. I'll click on candlesticks and I could do open, high, low, close. I could do 
uh, line on close, all of these things are available to me. All these different chart types are available to me. Available to me. We'll leave it at candlestick for now, right? We'll leave it at candlestick for now. And the next one over is chart settings. We'll click on that, and it gives me all the different things that I could add to my chart. Do I want to see my fills and orders? Do I want to see my price levels? Uh, daily volume profile I could add here from the settings section. Um, I could add a market depth, um, and it goes on and on and on. So. I would go ahead and uh, suggest everybody to experiment with the different settings because everyone's unique, right? As traders, we're unique. <clears throat> we like to see things in a certain way that's uh, easy for us to understand and for our eyes to adjust to right away. So that settings tab is pretty good. Uh, another gear right there also, this is telling me, hey, Jim, do you want to get rid of the Bollinger Bands? Do I want to get rid of the commodity channel index at the bottom? And the answer is no, I like those there. I want to keep those. those are, that's my oscillator and that's my uh, indicator that I have on my 15 minute chart. But that's how I would delete them if I didn't want them anymore. The next one over is actually the indicators. And this allows me to add indicators. Moving averages is an example. If I wanted to add a simple moving average, I'll click on it. It'll open up a dialog box, which is smart. It'll be like, all right, Jim, what period moving average do you like? Um, I'm going to change this. I don't know. We'll change it to 20. Why not? We'll change it to a 20 period moving average. I could change the colors too if I wanted to. Um, we'll leave it at light blue. I think that's reasonable. Um, and then uh, all the other settings, I think we are good. So I'm going to have keep it as overlay. I'll hit save and it'll add it. So there's that blue line there added it uh, to the chart really easy. Now, one of the other things that's um, uh, I should point out is uh, if you wanted to, you know, you could you could grab the axis right to move it up and down, um, but you could also zoom in. So there's that uh, zoom in feature on the left hand side, upper left hand side of the chart. It's a plus sign. Click it, and then just decide what area you want to zoom into and click. Make a rectangle. Click again, and it zooms in to whatever area you're interested in examining. Uh, on an expanded basis. Alternatively, if you would like to zoom out, just click that zoom out button and you'll zoom out. And then there's an arrow on the right hand, upper right hand side that lets you move kind of just center things to the right, wordy to the right. So we're good to go. Um, I have my oscillator at the bottom here, the commodity channel index. I could adjust the, the distance between them simply with my, um, uh, my mouse, just like that, just grabbing it and moving it around. It's pretty, uh, pretty easy, uh, easy peasy on the chart side of things. So when I'm done with this chart and I want to look at the other information in my trading platform, I'm just going to click that, you know, full size arrow, you know, I'm going to minimize it and it brings it back to the position that it started it from. Everybody with me so far? Any questions, feel free to type them in. By the way, I do have uh, Ed Jerkin is with me behind the scenes. Uh, Ed is a... Um, Long-term Ninja Trader uh, associate of mine uh, has been it with Ninja Trader a lot longer than me, um, and knows everything about everything. So, if you have any Ninja Trader related questions, it doesn't matter what the subject matter is. It doesn't even have to be about uh, the web-based charts. Now is your time. You have Ed's attention. Type it into the chat. If you haven't found the chat, let me tell you where to go to the chat. It's really easy. It'll only take you a second. You're not missing anything. You just go to ninjatrader.com, the website ninjatrader.com forward slash the word events, E-V-E-N-T-S. And then once there, you'll be able to select this event. It's really easy. You, you create a handle or a name, however you want to be known as, right? And then you could type, go ahead and type away and comment and ask questions and that'll pick them up. Um, uh, in real time basis. So in any event, I uh, highly uh, suggest you do that if you have some questions. Thank you, by the way, Ed, for being here with me today. Let's kind of take a peek now. We looked at the charts uh, real quickly here. Let's look at the trading ladder, right? Again, it's tab based at the top. I got the micro NASDAQ on one side. I have the E-mini S&P on the other side. And then as usual, there's like view settings. We could expand it. Right. If you expand it, it does this. It looks kind of crazy, but you could exp expand it. Um, you could look at the settings also, and it has a bunch of different settings. Show, sh you know, join bid offer. Let's click on that. And it added this join and bid, join, join bid, join ask. I say offer. Ask is another way of saying offer. Join bid, join ask. It added those buttons. So this is kind of how you customize this. You could show histogram. Uh, it's kind of a volume profile, tick for tick volume profile on the right side. I bet you didn't expect to see that on a web-based platform. It's pretty, pretty cool. 
And then um, I show pulling and stacking and other, uh, other, there's even another settings button within the settings button um, that helps you with things like mouse configuration, how you want your mouse action to work. Um, and you can change how you want that, that mouse action to work. And then there's other uh, show indicators on charts is also a handy feature. You, you also might remember that from the PC based platform as well. And then you have uh, order type colorization. So I'm going to hit save. So again, look for that little, that little uh, view settings um, gear or cog or whatever you call it on any module. And it'll open up that kind of area where you could add stuff. So um, trading, uh, if you want to close this dome, you don't want it open. You just want to get rid of it. Uh, for any of these modules, you have that little X button on the upper right and you move your mouse over it. It says close. Well, that means close it, get rid of it. You know, it'll, it'll give you a warning and say, are you sure you want to do that? Um, so uh, on the left side, we have, I have a position, right? It shows me my position here on my trading ladder. I'm long one. That's the green. Uh, it's green. If I was short, it would be red, right? But I'm long one at a price of uh, 14741 and a quarter, right? And it shows my unrealized P&L underneath it. Right. This is this is uh, for this open position. Right. This is the gross PL. And then I have the quantities in case I want to make another trade. I could, you know, I have my quantity or quantity already set up there and to make a trade. I mean, really, it's it's pretty it's just a click of a mouse. Right. I just click on a price and you'll see an order go here on the sell side. And now I'm trying to sell one at a limit order of 14, 7, 58 and three quarters. And that's, you know, I, I'm going to leave it there for now. I could change it. I can cancel and replace it. I could delete it. I could do any of that stuff um, right here from the trading ladder. And usually most people don't have this big expanded range on the trading on the trading ladder. I get that. But for the demonstration purposes today, we're going to we're going to leave it. Now, if I wanted to move this down, I'm just going to grab it, hold my left mouse key down, move it to a different price and let go. So it's not click and click. It's click and hell, hold, click, hold, release, which is really, really convenient because then you could really see where you're going. And let's see if we can get a fill here in a second. We could place another trade. As a matter of fact, I could place another trade now. I could put a limit order in to try to buy one at a lower price. I'm just going to click in the green side, on the buy side. Um, we got filled. Uh, we did get filled on our sell order, right? And on the buy order down here, it's just it's waiting in the order book. I could cancel and replace it if I want. Or if I could just click on that X to cancel it. I just canceled it. So again, click on a price. It shows up there. It's really, really uh, slick, easy, and quick, right? And you get a lot of precision by doing it this way. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm sorry about that. Um, kind of like a panic button here. Exit at market and cancel. Boom. You want to. You want to. You want to just get out quickly. And if you want to join, if you don't want to do a market order, but you want to get as close to a market order as you can, you can click that join bid button or that join ask button. I hit the join bid button just now and I created another long position here in this market. I'm going to go ahead and just put a, a limit order in right now. Everybody with me so far? Um, I'm sorry. I, and so also I did put a stop and let me explain what I did. So to put a stop loss in, I'm just going to go, for instance, it'll be a sell stop. So it'll be below the market. I'm just going to go in again to this ask column and I'm going to pick a price. I'm going to use the middle mouse of my middle mouse roller. I'm going to click once and it's going to put it in there right there. So there's my stop loss right there. Same thing. I could drag it to a different position, let go. I could keep trailing it on the way up as this market goes up. It's really, really simple. So um, and that's pretty much it. Those are the basic fundamentals of how to use uh, the trading uh, don't. And there's other, more features here that we're going to go into in, in, in a couple of weeks um, as we go through the series of using the, the NinjaTrader web-based uh, web platform. So let's take a look at some of the other modules here while we're at it, right? Let's go ahead and take a peek at, I don't know, let's go to, uh, let's expand the quote board. Okay, so here's the quote board right here. And again, look at there's a little there's a little uh, 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 you know cog here, a little wheel here. View settings. You could click on this view settings, and I could select columns. Look at that. And so these are available. These I already have visible on my on my on my on my quote board. But I could add you know I could add some other stuff here that may or may not be you know useful. But as an example, um, we could do. 
uh, bid size, buy, sell buttons, because um, you could trade from this as well. You could trade from any module, really. Uh, last size, offer size, open interest, settle, timestamp, trend, and underlying. And to add something, to add something, I'm just going to drag it over, right, and let go. It's really easy. Just literally, just grab offer size. See those that hamburger where my mouse turns into like a cross. I'm going to hold my mouse button down, grab it, and pull it down. And it's going to put it in the visible column. Really easy. Hit save. And then it added those. Uh, it added these two columns on the right-hand side here. Now, if I wanted to customize these, I could move them out a little bit. You know, it's it's all, it's all this is all common sense, intuitive stuff, right? Just moving stuff out. Um, now, I have a series of tabs up at the top. I don't have to have tabs up at the top, but I do have a series of tabs up. And so my first in, my first tab is the stock index futures, right? I got everything from the E-mini S&P at the very top left, all the way down to uh, the Eurex Exchange's DAX contract at the bottom and everything in between, including the micro NASDAQ, as we talked about already. We have um, a currency tab. These are uh, futures uh, markets, right? These are currency futures markets or currency Forex markets, right? And this, these are pairs. These are These are... Uh, the uh, euro FX versus the US dollar, yen versus the US dollar, et cetera, et cetera, all, all through just about every major currency pair. Um, and then some minor currency pairs also. If you're trading cash over the counter Forex, you know the difference between majors and minors. But basically, a major's got way more volume, right? Euro is at the top of the list, yen is right below it. Um, and, you know, Aussie dollar, British pound, sterling. Uh, a close third place bronze medal for those two on the volume point of view than the Canadian dollar. So um, these are uh, currencies. We have energies here. Uh, we, you know, we have energy. This is an asset class, but these are futures, right? Heating oil. We've got the mini crude oil. We got um, Nat gas, uh, the big size crude oil, the big size Nat gas, and then our Bob gasoline, which is another one. Uh, if you're trade, interested in trading gasoline futures, metals, let's keep going. Silver, platinum, uh, palladium, uh, gold, E-mini gold, and copper. Probably the, the, the contracts that most folks would focus on, and I have to roll this one over. Let me show you how to do that, uh, is silver, gold, copper, or their micros. To roll something over, you're just going to right-click, and it, it gives you all of this stuff, right? It gives you all of these options to do right here from the quote board. Um, I can get quote info, which will give me a snapshot. I could get an, I could set an alert. I could trade. I could delete this from my quote board. I could click roll forward, and I roll forward. Now silver is in November, right? This might not be enough. I'm going to roll forward again. Now uh, I got December silver, forty thousand. That makes more sense, right? So you can go through here and roll forward or roll back, depending on what contract month you're interested in trading. And let's go back here and, and open that quick that quote info. And this will give me this particular, uh, this is a new window. It opened up the box. And then here is all the details that I need to know about this particular contract. This is pretty useful, by the way, um, where it has day trade margins. It has uh, maintenance overnight margins, tick size. This is a pretty good one. Tick value. Did you know each tick is worth $25? You know, those kind of things. Price, pr price format, right? Price format. Um, expiration date, and so on and so forth. So that's pretty handy as well. I'm going to close that and go back here. Right-click again, and we can set alerts, um, trade, click on that trade button. This is going to be a simple trade ticket if I wanted to trade from here. Not as, as sophisticated or as cool as the trading ladder, but pretty pretty, pretty uh, you know, useful, right? I mean, if I wanted to sell one, I would just pick a price, and I could change the price with the arrows or type into that price box or do something like that. I'm going to go ahead and just sell a, uh, send one an order in. Um, again, don't follow live at home. I'm just kind of randomly showing how this works. Um, my releases, um, you know, I'm not going to have a release time. I'm just going to send it, and boom, that order is going to go. It's my confirmation box, and it's in the, in the order book somewhere. Grains are next on my list. I got corn. We've got mini corn. We've got wheat, soy oil, soybean oil, soybean meal, oats, rough rice, soybeans, all of the, you know, pretty much classic commodity futures markets, right? These are the classic. And again, I could, I could, you know, um, hit that um, view settings, select columns. I could add different columns and any of these that I so choose. Meats is next. 
live cattle, feeder cattle, lean hog. We're taking me way back in the way back machine. Softs, again, sugar, coffee, cocoa, sugar, cotton, orange juice. Um, and then I got a stacked uh, symbol over here, which gives me some stocks that we're tracking as well uh, in the window. So that's the quote board. Now, one might say, well, if I could I make a general quote board, right? I just want to have my own quotes in there. I don't want them to be broken up by assets. Sure. There's a little plus button there, a new tab. And then you could just make it whatever you want. Let's say you trade uh, E-mini S&P. Let's say you trade crude oil. Um, and let's say that you trade gold. I'm just typing in symbols. I'm selecting once the symbol smart box gives me an answer. I click on it. And this, again, would be like a general general quote board, right? These are what I look at all the time. And I could certainly do that as well. Minimize it. It, it brings it back down to where we were. All right. Where else? What else do we have to talk about here? We can, Well, let's talk about orders. Let's talk about orders. I'm going to open up the orders uh, window. Again, you got that view settings uh, there. You could select columns. You could show filters, standard table view, linked orders view. So there's a couple different ways to do it. I'm going to hit, I'm just going to go to select columns here to see if there's any other information here that I think I need in my columns area that I don't already have. Remember, visible is on the right. We already have it. Available is on the left. It's not showing yet. It's invisible. Available is the same as invisible. So let's just go ahead and move account over here. Grab that hamburger, drag it over here, let go, hit save, and I added that account. You know, if you have multiple accounts, this could be handy. This could be definitely, definitely handy. And then you could type the filter. There's this little type the filter box up here in the upper left. So that's this, the, <coughs> excuse me, this is the order tab. Um, again, I would experiment with the settings on this. Yes, you could add another tab here if you wanted to. You know, as an example, you might want one order tab just showing working orders, another order tab showing canceled orders, another order tab showing filled orders if you want. Um, or you could just kind of toggle. You could just sort sort by clicking on the top of the of the of the uh, of the column, and it will sort the data according to where you click. And this is the view I would prefer. We're going to go ahead and minimize that. And um, there you have it. This is my um, my modified positions tab. I have my orders tab down here. Um, again, if I want to see more, I just open it up to full size. I want to see less. I kind of shrink it down. Oh, boy, I think we covered all the ground that we want to cover today. I think the takeaways here are um, you have the power with the web-based trading platform to access futures markets from any PC, uh, any uh, Apple, any tablet, even your phone. If you don't want to go with the app, you could, you could access it anywhere, right? So you're traveling, you're on someone else's computer, you go through the process to, to, you know, go through the privacy process and you're good. So that's kind of advantage number one. Now it's super fast too. I mean, the data is super fast here. Don't, don't think it's any, don't think it's not. Um, number two though, is really the ability to customize it, make it look like you, how you want it to look right? Just, you, it's kind of like a blank canvas, right? You could create a Picasso and you could kind of uh, really uh, just show the information that you want to show with a look and feel that you want to see. So that's also kind of a, a cool, a cool and handy way. And then lastly, it's all integrated together, right? So, you know, when you, you you're not going to get a different account statement, right? Everything behind the scenes is all integrated with PC based and with the, um, uh, with the mobile. So if you do something on one, it'll show up on the other and et cetera, et cetera. So keep that in mind also uh, if you are toggling between types of platforms. All right. Well, um, I think we covered everything we needed to cover today, folks. I appreciate everybody being here today. Next week, we're going to go into a little deeper dive. Uh, I can't remember if it's charting or the trading ladder, but one of those two we're going to hit uh, pretty tight next week. And we're going to go into a bunch of detail on how to kind of uh, use these uh, trading tools a little bit in more depth and more efficiently, um, at least how I would do it as, as, in any event. So um, having said all that, folks, um, greatly appreciate your time today. Hopefully we'll see you at bars closing later on this afternoon at 3.15 East Coast time. Michael Burke is hosting bars closing today. It will be a spectacular show. Uh, I can't wait to see uh, Michael later on today at 3.15 East Coast time. In the meantime, please, most important message of the day, be safe out there, be good to each other.
See you soon. 